right guys, Justin from Deep Dive Stocks here, and finally, we're going to take a dive into Vorex. Vorex is, I love it, it's Deep Dive Stocks prized toy, and it monitors the stability throughout the market and for individual stocks, and we're going to see today how that can provide some very powerful insights for us. So, let's go ahead and get started. So Vorex stands for volatility over exposure. And the idea is that it measures the volatile forces on a stock that can move a price uh, independent of like retail supply and demand. So not necessarily much to do with volatility itself, although Vorex does incorporate some liquidity metrics. The idea is that when a stock has an overabundance of volatile, for volatile forces, these forces can start moving a stock along um, in ways that maybe are perplexing to people who are looking at sentiment values or, you know, earnings or fundamentals, because these forces can become quite significant and impose the, kind of their will on the price action of a stock. So they measure the price directing forces on a stock. And Vorex was designed to be pretty straightforward. Um, I didn't want it to be complicated. Um, there's one, there's two lines. There's the Vorex Daily, which is magenta. And then there's the Vorex Trend, which is golden. And that's it, right? But I also wanted it to be statistically verified. And thankfully, Vorex ended up being very statistically relevant, which we're going to take a look at as well. There were three main pillars uh, for Vorex. I wanted it, or sorry, we're going to talk about some of the things that it measures. So first, it does measure a lot of the dynamic hedging requirements in the market. Uh, it also measures the dynamic liquidity requirements in the market. And it also measures the impact or the consequence that certain options can have on the price of a stock. And it monitors all of them, uh, wraps it into one package, and gives us Vorex. There were three main pillars that I wanted Vorex to be able to um, like have or to be supported by or the foundation of Vorex. And I wanted it to be easy to use. It needed to be statistically relevant, but it also needed to provide good insights. And so... Vorex has like two components, and we see that here on the graph. It has Vorex daily, which is magenta, and those are the daily fluctuations in Vorex. We then have the Vorex trend, which is golden. And then the blue line is the price for whichever stock we're looking at. But other than that, there's two horizontal lines. The top one is the inhibition line. The bottom one is the propagation line. And as long as Vorex is between those two lines, a stock is considered stable. If Vorex goes above the inhibition line into the inhibition zone, we consider the stock to be unstable. If the stock goes below the propagation line into the propagation zone, we consider the stock to be unstable. The names of these zones and the lines indicate what the most probable outcome for the price action is. So typically, the price action that provokes Vorex going into, into the inhibition zone will be inhibited. So it will be worked against. So the most common outcome for the price action after that is for it to fall. Conversely, with the propagation zone, if the whatever price action provoked Vorex falling into the propagation zone will be the price action that is typically overly pushed along by these various forces. Pretty simple, right? So the, we have the inhibition zone, we have the propagation zone. And then outside of that, interpreting Vorex is we got three states that Vorex can exist in. We have Vorex inside of stability, we have Vorex outside of stability, and it's either unstable because it's in the inhibition zone or it's in the propagation zone. Either way, we consider the stock to be unstable. One of the ways that I wanted to statistic statistically verify Vorex was if Vorex is significant, well, then the change in Vorex should be significant. And that's what the snap graphs do. So the snap graphs take the change in Vorex over the given time interval. So we have one day for one day. Five days, so that's five trading days, so that's one week. Ten days, ten trading days, two weeks, and twenty days, twenty trading days, one month. So it takes the how Vorex has been behaving in the past over this given time interval and maps it to the future price action given the historical context or like the historical data. The snap graphs give us the trend line, so that's the line we see right here or the model as well as a highlighted region, which, which is a 95% confidence interval for that data. Now, for anyone out there who may be familiar with market data, a 95% confidence interval is wild. 
that means that we can be 95% confident that that is the true trend in the data that we are seeing. So when the crosshairs are indicating, for instance, here, the five day negative returns based off of the previous five days of VOX behavior, and it's inside of the model, we're 95% confident that, that the behavior that we're seeing in VOX is statistically relevant for future behavior over the same time frame. So for instance, for this stock, we see negative returns indicated on the one day, negative returns indicated on the five day, negative returns indicated on the, sorry, the 10 day, and negative returns indicated on the 20 day. These, the snap graphs were verified using over 2 million data points over the past three years of market data. So it's pretty significant, especially to be able to get uh, the 95% confidence interval. And each set of snap graphs is individually tailored to each individual stock. And we see that the accuracy comes out to be about a little north of 70% accurate for determining the direction of the price movement. And that is something worth pointing out. The snap graphs and the snap algorithm are optimized for the direction of price movement, not necessarily the um, magnitude of price movement. I leave anticipating the magnitude of price movement into the, in your hands. Another way that VOX was statistically verified is that there are certain phenomenon throughout the stock market called VOX spikes. So if we gather up over the past three years, we find 12,445 incident incidences of VOX spikes, and we map them. And we see that when we have positive VOX spikes with a confidence interval of 68% for directionality, we have a predominantly negative price action. And then if we have negative VOX spikes, it's a little bit more dynamic, but nonetheless still statistically relevant. So we see if the VOX spike for instance, is a negative 300 in magnitude on the on average or a one standard deviation of probability is that the price action over the next five days will be negative. So Vorex spike, so Vorex has now been verified in its normal everyday behavior through the snap graphs. And then Vorex gets verified in when it indicates drastic and sudden changes in stability by way of the Vorex spikes. But that's not all. I then wanted to use backtesting to make sure that the VOX spikes in particular were uh, useful. And if we do 48 different types of backtesting, which by the way, you can read the code in the algorithm and get the data, it's all on GitHub uh, for these backtests to make sure I'm not fudging any of the numbers. But we find out of the 48 backtests, five of them produce negative returns, so not that good, but that's a 10% um, for those. The, the backtests, that produce positive returns were 43 out of the 48 or 89.58 percent and then 15 out of those 48 back tests or 31 percent beat spy and that's pretty impressive if i do say so myself and what was interesting about the back testing is that there were distinct characteristics between the ones that didn't beat the market that produced positive returns or the and the ones that produced the negative returns so it wasn't kind of like a random assortment of like, ah, oh, some of these back tests did well and some of these back tests did, uh, didn't do well. There were clearly defined trends and groups that, that help um, understand why the back tests that, for instance, produce negative returns, excuse me, why they produce negative returns. So VOX measures instability in the market. It, in three different ways, has been shown to be statistically relevant. So all of that group together, I still needed it to be insightful, right? Like it still needs to give us actionable data. And so let's look at just a handful of examples of Varex and see how insightful and how actionable it really becomes. For instance, if we look at Netflix recently, I'm sure everyone is aware, but it's been tanking. But Varex fell into the propagation zone during a price decline, and it fell in December at a price of around $617. Well, since then, it's lost 40% of its value. And um, if anyone is like, well, the market's going down, correct. But remember, Vox fell into the propagation zone in December of 2021. December. I would like, you know, I, I would pose it to the listener who is skeptical about how the change in price is related to Vox to find any of the macro situations that are being used to describe or explain or rationalize the recent market behavior back in December of 2021. 
If you find anything, let me know, because you won't. Let's look at another example, famous example again, Facebook. Facebook fell into the propagation zone two weeks before the massive drop in price. Coincidence? Maybe. Probably not. But it fell into the propagation zone at a, at a value of $318.15. As of today, the recording, it is now at $187, representing a 40% loss in value. And we notice Vox is still in the propagation zone. So what does that mean? Statistically, that means that the most likely outcome is persistent and continued decline in price. So maybe 187.47 isn't the floor for Facebook. We'll find out. Moving on, we can go to Clove. Clove fell into the propagation zone in November 16th of 2021 at a value of $6.94. And what's interesting is it works finally breached in back into stability after a 60% decline in price. And recently, as Boex has hung out in the stable zone, although the recent Boex behavior is maybe a little concerning, but ever since Boex rose back into stability, the stock has seen a 10% return in its value. So again, the idea being that as long as the stock is stable, a stock will do what stocks typically do and rise in price. Versus when a stock suddenly experiences instability, what does the stock normally do? It falls in price. And that's it for Vorex. That is the primer on Vorex. I have a ton of educational material on Vorex. I highly recommend you check it out if you found this video interesting. I have, if you would like to learn more about Vorex spikes, head over to the website, deepdivestocks.com. I have the market scan primer that outlines the research and the data behind the Vorex spikes. If you would like to read about the backtesting, on the website, I have the uh, VS TOG or the Vorex Spike Trading Algorithm uh, Education Primer that outlines the algorithm used for backtesting um, and all, all of the results for the backtesting. If you would like more information on Vorex or some of the forces that Vorex measures, again, on the website, we have the Tier 1 educational material. I mean, there is so much educational material on my website. I don't think I should have this many PDFs on a single website. I have to go check my server to make sure it's still doing okay. Um, but there's a lot of stuff. And if you like this uh, video, I definitely recommend checking out some of the other ones and dropping a like, a comment, subscribe, email me at justin at deepdivestocks.com. Let me know how I'm doing. And um, oh, and if you want to become a member, that's on the website as well. If you want to sign up for the Gamma Gainers newsletter, so every day a newsletter gets sent right to your email with all of the stocks that are in a Gamma Squeeze, uh, that's on the website as well. And that's all I have for you guys today. I'm going to definitely do more videos diving into the nitty gritty with Vorex. And I hope to see you guys there. Have a good one. Bye.